this is this the new one Good evening. Welcome to uh, the Great Hall here at Quincy City Hall. Today is Tuesday, September 5th, and we are here for our first uh, scheduled council meeting of the, uh, the, the, the fall. So welcome back, everybody, from a, a summer hiatus, but I know it wasn't a hiatus. Everybody was working hard out in the uh, city, so thanks very much. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would call the roll of members, please. Councilor Keene. Present. Council Crow. Present. Councilor DeBona. Present. Councilor Finn. Council Harris. Yeah. Present. Council LaForest. Present. Council Liang. Present. Council Palmucci. Present. President Hughes. Here. Eight members, you have a quorum. Great. Thank you very much. If you'll all stand, please. Join me in a moment of silence. We just want to remember those victims. Uh, in Houston and Texas, um, suffering because of um, the flooding and the um, the storm, and um, you know, think about those we might know or those we don't know, and um, and certainly um, wish for their um, their continued um, prayers and 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 their health and support for them. So. And if you'll turn and face the flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, if you'll read the open meeting law. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Great, thank you. And if you will read the first agenda item, Madam Clark. Number one on the agenda is 2017-132, an appropriation for $12,836,000 for public buildings, lands, computers, soft grade, up Software upgrades. Okay. Uh, Councilor Kroll. Good evening, Madam President. Good evening. Uh, I'd just like to make a motion that we put place that in committee for a uh, meeting to be scheduled later on this evening. All right. Motion to go. That will go to committee um, to finance committee. Thank you. Next item, Madam Clerk. Number two on the agenda, 2017-133, an appropriation for $7,100,000 for a new animal shelter. Similar fashion, make a motion to uh, place that in finance committee. All right, that would be um, go to finance committee. On a motion? Yes, Councillor Helmucci. Uh, perhaps through you to the mayor's representative. Um, we were going to look into, we the city was going to look into uh, the access from uh, Avalon. Do you have an update on that, or will there be an update when we when we get this? You don't have to tell us now. I guess I just I will be looking for an answer to that. And I, um, kind of a spoiler alert. I heard that they were saying that perhaps there isn't that right. I would just encourage the administration to pull the tapes of the PUD meeting because it's my recollection that it was discussed uh, as part of their presentation in the discussion before the council in um, contemplation of that permit. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Pelmucci. Madam Clerk, next item. Number three on the agenda, 2017-134, an appropriation for $2,700,000 for land acquisition of St. Mary's School. Okay. Councilor Crow. Uh, go to finance, Madam President. All right. Uh, motion to finance. Uh, that will be placed in the Finance Committee. Next is number four on the agenda, 2017-135, an appropriation for 2300000 for traffic, bicycle, parking, and pedestrian safety master plan and traffic improvements. All right. Similar fashion, motion to finance, and just for, uh, for the committee, because I know it's been um, obviously a break uh, since, we've, since we've talked about this, I, I have asked uh, the auditor to recirculate the information that was provided to us back around early April. 
And I would encourage counselors that if you have uh, additional informational requests leading up to uh, the scheduled meeting, which will take care <coughs> of later on this evening, um, you know, please make those requests. And thank you again to the uh, to the auditor for her help. But motion to uh, refer that to finance. Okay. All those in favor? Okay, great. Motion to finance. Number five on the agenda, 2017-136, an appropriation for $128,030 for Mayor's Drug Task Force. Okay. Council Crow. Motion to uh, move that to finance. All right, motion moved to finance. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, motion replaced in finance. Number six on the agenda. Objection. Okay. Uh, Councillor Harris. All right, objection to item number uh, six. six on the agenda, the Department of Public Works Administrative Reorganization. So that will be placed on um, the agenda for the next meeting. Number seven on the agenda, 2017-138, in order, a home rule petition John Patrick Ryan, okay. that the City Council of the City of Quincy petition the General Court pursuant to the Clause 1 of Section 8 of Article Motion 2. Motion with the reading by <laughs> Council LaForest. Um, I believe the Mayor's representative uh, would like to be recognized at this time to uh, speak on this. Is that okay, Council LaForest? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Just briefly, Ms. Madam Walker. President, uh, so the body, uh, those members of the body who weren't here in 2014 when this was originally approved. Um, this is essentially a, a refiling of a home rule. I'm sorry. This is essentially a refiling of a home rule petition that was filed and approved by this body uh, by an eight to nothing vote in 2014. Unfortunately, uh, the clock at the state house ran out, so it needs uh, to be refiled. Uh, as many of you know, uh, Sergeant John Ryan was injured in the line of duty and determined to be uh, fully disabled. Uh, there was a time. Uh, as per civil service rules where um, a son or a daughter of a police officer injured in the line of duty would get automatic status on civil service. Um, that has since changed um, and it requires uh, home rule uh, to make that happen. Uh, and that's the case we are, uh, the case we're in right now. Um, and again, this was uh, approved by this body uh, in 2014. And it's our hope that um, we can get this back up to the state house uh, expeditiously uh, so we can get the ball rolling up there. Thank you. I know Council of Force, but um, if I could ask a question. So it's a state law that we have to do it this way? Yes. Okay. Um, and there's no ordinance or anything that we could pass that would change that? No, it's a civil service rule, Madam President. Okay. Thank you. Council of Forest. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to com comment on um, Sergeant John Ryan and his family's commitment to public service here in the city of Quincy. Um, there's a lot of families that we have that have multi-generations of service and have great pride and commitment to our community. And the Ryan family is one of those strong families. So um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the order this evening. Yes, if I may, I just kind of echo the sentiment that I think you were hinting at, uh, uh, Council President, that the fact that we have to vote on this is kind of absurd, uh, to me anyways. Um, as Chris had said, that this used to be a, uh, something that was kind of pro forma with civil service. If you were uh, disabled in the line of duty, your, your children got, got moved up the list, a preferential treatment um, for, that, for that same service in that same city. The, the fact that we have to do this on a one-off basis, um, I would have, I had made the same, the question that you asked, I had asked the administration earlier today, if can't we just pass an ordinance that says this applies to everyone, not just the Ryan family? I mean, shouldn't this be a rule that we say in Quincy, if you are the child of a disabled uh, um, member of one of our, our first responder fire police, um, that you automatically get that. And, and I was told we can't, we have to do it by home rule petition on each and every case. Um, this is an easy, you know, this is an easy no brainer for me, I think probably for everyone else too. You know, it's an opportunity that for us to show that we, uh, you know, stand up and have the backs of those first responders who on a daily basis stand up for us and have our backs whenever we need them. So, you know, this is an easy vote. I would, I would, um, I would 
just echo the sentiment that Council of the Forest um, had shared about the Ryan family specifically, but but as it relates to a, a, a whole class of individuals, I would suggest I support this anytime it comes up. So thank you. All right, thank you very much, Councilor um, Anyone else wishing to speak? All right, so a motion made by Councilor Forrest, seconded by Councilor Palucci on the motion. Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Kroll. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor LaForest. Yes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Palucci. Yes. President Hughes. Yes. Eight members. Thank you. Number eight on the agenda, 2017-139, ordinance regulating SOBA houses. Be it ordained that the city Motion council. Away. Motion away the reading, Councilor Liang. Yes, okay, motion away the reading. Councilor Palmucci. Thank you, uh, actually, uh, Council of Forest is a co-sponsor of this, if we can make sure that um, her name is added to it. Uh, mm -hmm. This measure is, uh, unfortunately, the result of a situation that's really just kind of, at least in my ward, I don't know um, what other ward councilors are dealing with, but it's kind of spiraled out of control. Um, I think we all know and have known for a long time, we're in this business of governing, uh, that you can't regulate sober homes. Uh, in the past approximately five months, five sober homes have sprung up in Ward 4, uh, predominantly in residential neighborhoods. Uh, we have one particular one that showed up on a, on a essentially what's essentially a cul-de-sac, a dead end street in the middle of a neighborhood. Um, as you can imagine, this has caused quite a lot of concern from residents that, that one, the way in which these things come out, um, come out of nowhere. There's no registration with the city. There's no licensing process with the city. There's no regulations with the city that governs how these how these sober homes can be operated, where they can be located, um, and and what's really kind of frightening uh, to me is that there's nothing federally, uh, there's no federal regulations or state regulations that govern how a sober house can be run, managed, operated, or located. Uh, what we have here is, uh, I, I, lack of a better word, it's a loophole. There's a loophole in the law due to um, some federal legislation and some case law deciding that federal, uh, opining on that federal legislation that has created a loophole in which sober houses uh, currently exist. And as the need for reliable places to send loved ones and family members and uh, folks you care about to get help and insurance is covering more and more, I fear that we're going to have even more of these facilities open up and be opened and, and that's okay, uh, but be opened by folks that we don't know who they are, we don't know what their background is, um, and they're not really in the business of providing a sober home for folks to live in. They're in the business of collecting checks for providing a sober home. Um, and I think as a municipality, this is something we need to avoid. Um, this regulation, and again, I, I, I fully expect, I've worked with Solicitor Timmons in the mayor's office, um, we fully expect that this will get challenged legally uh, if this matter passes. Uh, but what this legislation seeks to do is essentially draw a line in the sand that says here in Quincy, may not exist anywhere else across the country, but here in Quincy, we're going to do two things. Uh, we're going to protect the quality of life in our residential neighborhoods uh, from having a business just pop up out of nowhere without any notice to anyone, without any notice of or regulations as to who's there or who's running it. And we're also going to, the second thing is we're also going to protect the vulnerable folks who are coming out of detox who need a sober place to live, a clean, safe, sober place to live where they can get resources for uh, their recovery. Uh, that's what this legislation does. It serves those two very important purposes. Protect the folks who are living in sober homes and who are serviced by sober homes and to protect the quality of life in our neighborhoods to make sure uh, we know who the operators of these sober homes are. Uh, so I would ask that this be referred to committee um, and then later on uh, to oversight committee. Uh, later on tonight, I'm gonna probably schedule a, a meeting of the oversight committee 
uh, in which we will take uh, testimony. I would like to fast track this. As I said, we're operating at an average of, or the, these things are springing up on an average of one per month in Ward 4. Um, this is something we need to get a handle on. I think residents expect us to. Uh, certainly the meetings and conversations that I've had with everybody, they're shocked that we can't do more than what we're doing. And um, I think up until now, it's been the standard operating procedure of every municipality to simply say our hands are tied on this. Um, while I do think our hands are tied, I think we shouldn't try to untie them by putting in some reasonable regulation. So I'd ask that this matter be referred to, uh, I guess, oversight and, and um, ordinance. the ordinance, and I'd ask that it be advertised at the first available um, time to do so. All right, so refer the matter to ordinance and um, oversight committee as well. And just to echo those sentiments, Councilor Palmucci, I was happy to co-sponsor this because I do think that this is something important. And it's not to cast um, aspersions on people who want to get help, who want to get better. I am for treatment. I believe that um, obviously uh, drug and alcohol addiction are a, an enormous problem that plagues our community um, as well as other communities across the Commonwealth. Um, and when we have these uh, sober homes that don't do a good job, that don't provide care adequately, that don't um, don't maintain um, a good atmosphere for folks to get better um, and for uh, a place, a safe place for the neighborhood, um, then, um, then, then it, it's really um, something that cast out on the whole um, on the whole recovery community, and that's something that we need to be more open to, um, not not more afraid of, not more closed off. So regulating those um, sober homes is is um, is something that we we don't do currently at the state um, and federal level, and is something that um, I know other communities. You and I talked about this um, in other states, other places across the nation have done similar things to attempt to get this under control. And so um, I'm happy to, to work on this as well with the solicitor and with the community to make sure that people feel safe in their neighborhoods and, um, and people have a good, adequate um, environment to recover from an addiction, which clearly doesn't just affect those who are afflicted with it or their families, but really the whole community. Um, so um, we will refer the matter to um, ordinance and if, if, if I could add to that, too, I, it, it, I have publicly supported sober homes in Ward 4 and, and in this, elsewhere in the city previously. And the, the ones that I've supported went through a community process where there was notification before it opened up. The ones that, that are really diminishing the quality of a residential neighborhood are the ones where I'm getting a phone call and say, Brian, what's going on at such and such address? And I say, I don't know, what do you mean? And they said, oh, I don't know, this contract is over there. They told me they're opening up a sober house at the end of the week. And then all of a sudden there's 14 people living in what used to be a single family house. That's a problem. We don't know who the operators are. So it's not certainly not my intention to cast aspersions on right. the folks receiving services or the folks even uh, opening up the sober homes. It's this, there has to be a more robust community process. There has to be involvement from the city, notification. Uh, there has to be a time period for residents to be able to ask questions and learn about uh, residents who are going to be living in the community near it, ask questions and learn about who the operators are and how they're going to run their facility. We need probably 20, 30 more of these in the city of Quincy. Uh, and I would gladly, if a sober operator called me up and said, I'd like to open up a sober house in Ward 4, I'd say, great, let's find you a place that makes sense. Let's, I'll work with you. Um, but for the folks who decide to just open up in the middle of a residential, single family residential neighborhood without notice to the city, without conversation with any neighbors or, or anybody, um, that's something I think we need to get our hands on. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yes, uh, Councilor Kane. Just two quick questions. Um, by definition, and I don't know who can answer this, is a sober house also a halfway house? N not that I'm, these halfway houses, I, from what I understand, are different. But maybe, I know the city clerk does a lot with licensing and maybe could shed some clarification on that. Um, Madam Clerk. Thank you. The, we have group homes. We have um, lodging houses. Um, but as far as the um, group homes go, um, everything is licensed through the license board. And I did get a chance to look at this today, and I did speak with Mr. Timmons. And um, I agree with the definition 
and um, some of the rules set forth before you tonight that in fact um, there should be a process with the licensing board if not I mean they're calling for um, the city clerk mm -hmm. to be the licensee but perhaps it even go as far as um, the licensing board that's where all our lodging houses and um, multi Units go through the and, licensing board, and then so then um, it's enforced by inspectional services. Inspectional services, the fire department, health department. It would come out okay. All right, I just want to know under whose kind of jurisdiction this would be managed um, for an already you know seemingly burdened uh, inspectional services department. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Licensing also is a public meeting, so people can yeah. get up and speak, yeah. which provides folks a forum sure. to ask questions and get answers. So. All right, thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, next item. Number nine on the agenda, 2017-140. Be it ordained that the city of Quincy accept the following gift upon the conditions attached thereof. Various donors, $3,000 to the DIA program. Yes. They're recognized with a thank you letter. Yes, okay. of course. Thank you. Second. Yes, Move. seconded by Councillor Harris? Uh, okay. No? Yes? Okay. Uh, on the motion, Madam Clerk? Councilor Kane? Yes. Councilor Kroll? Yes. Councilor DeBona? Yes. Councilor Finn? <coughs> Councilor Harris? Councilor LaForest? Yes. Yes. Councilor Liang? Yes. Councilor Pamucci? Yes. President Hughes? Yes. Eight members. Madam Clerk, if we could just go back to the um, ordinance. I don't believe it got voted into a committee, so. Um, there's a motion to put it into ordinance committee. Anything else? Ordinance Council? and oversight. Oh, ordinance and oversight. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The ayes have it. Next on the agenda is number 10, 2017-141, a gift for $510 from various donors to the DEA camp. Similar fashion, uh, move approval, and if we could just recognize the donors for their generosity. All right, motion to approve, Council Kroll, seconded by Council DeBona on the motion, Madam Clerk. Council Kane. Yes. Council Kroll. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council LaForest. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. President Hughes. Yes. Eight members. Next is number 11 on the agenda, 2017-142, a gift. Be it ordained that the city accept the following gift upon the conditions attached thereof. Copeland Family Foundation for $10,000 to the DEA program. Move approval. And send a note. Thank you, Councilor Kroll, motion to approve. Um, and seconded by Councilor DeBona on the motion. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Kroll. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Finn. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor LaForest. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Pamuji. Yes. President Hughes. Yes. Eight members. Next is number 12, 2017, 143, a gift for six thousand dollars from the Copeland Family Foundation Inc. to the Quincy Animal Shelter. Move approval. Madam Motion. President. All right, motion to approve by Councilor Kroll, seconded by Councilor LaForest. On the motion, Madam Clerk? Councilor Kane? Yes. Councilor Kroll? Yes. Councilor DeBona? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Forrest? Yes. Councilor Liang? Yes. Councilor Palmucci? Yes. President Hughes? Yes. Eight members. Be it ordained that the city of Quincy, oh, excuse me, number 13 on the agenda, 2017-144, a gift for $100 from the Independent Order of Odd Fellows to the Quincy Police Crime Prevention. Move approval. Motion to approve by Councillor Kroll, seconded by Councillor Kane. On the motion, Madam Clerk? Councillor Kane. Yes. Councillor Kroll. Yes. Councillor DeBona. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor LaForest. Yes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Council Pelmucci. Yes. President Hughes. Yes. Seven members. Yes. 
Next on the agenda is number 14, 2017, 145, a resolve for the Hancock Watt abatement resolution. Whereas he closing of the Hancock Municipal parking lot also to be slated to begin. And where is All right, motion away the reading by Councillor Pamucci. Councillor Pamucci on the motion. I mean, on the resolution. Resolution, yes, this is a resolution. Um, given the upcoming situation with the closing of the Hancock Municipal lot um, slated to begin um, and the parking calamity that it's likely to cause uh, affecting the businesses downtown. Uh, this is a resolution seeking the administration to work with the council to fashion and introduce within the next 90 days an ordinance that creates a commercial property tax abatement program structured around the closure of the Hancock Municipal Lot. This is similar to community meetings where I've been going to with sober house opens up in a residential neighborhood. I've been telling the residents who live next door to abate, to file for an abatement of their property because the character of their property has changed. Um, this is similar. We're going to, you have a commercial district where folks are going to struggle to park. Um, I, I can't imagine that there isn't going to be a negative impact on the businesses in the downtown, um, which is mostly problematic or, or, or first and foremost problematic because those are the existing businesses that are already downtown as well as the, the, the businesses that are on the front edge leading the renaissance downtown. So these are the businesses we want to make sure stay open during uh, this transition period and, and then thrive afterwards. So um, I don't know. I think we could, I would like to vote on it. If folks don't want to vote on it, if they want to put it in committee, I'm fine with that too. I, but I don't, um, I think it's a reasonable resolution to ask the administration to, to look at it and come back with us come back to us with something. Okay, so it's motion from Councilor Palmucci. Councilor Kane, did you want to second it? Or? No, no, no. Oh, okay, you have a question. Does somebody want to second it? Okay, do you want to put it into committee? No, I'll let it die for lack of a second. Lack of a second. Oh, but he didn't put it into committee. I didn't, no, the motion is to, it into committee, motion is to approve. He went to pass it, move so approval. Dies for lack of a second. Okay, all right. So, no need to ask your question. Okay. Thank you. Next slide. Number 15 on the agenda, 2017-146, a resolve animal control department policies and procedures review. There it be resolved that the Quincy City Council hereby request the administration to make a report to the City Council on the animal control department and its policies and procedures. Be it further resolved that the okay. administration- Motion away the reading by Council of Forest. Council of Forest. Thank you, Madam President. I have had, um, this has been an issue, and you, you heard me talk about it at budget time, but I've really had another summer with animal control being non-responsive to my constituents. And it's truly become an embarrassment to me that they're not responsive, they're not responding to call, we're hearing issues, people are calling me for follow-up. And it's ironic because, of course, I'm championing the Animal Shelter Project, and we're talking about a new animal shelter, a new home for animal control. Um, I expect I need more out of the animal control department. I'm looking to hear from them about what they're doing. How are they going to function in a new facility? How are they going to grow? I really think that this is an important discussion to have because they're failing our constituents, and it's very frustrating for something that's a small service. They shouldn't, my constituents should, should when they put a call in for a city service, should get a response. And I've had consistent conversations with the mayor's office, with the chief of staff's office, and it's to the point that we need to have this public discussion. I want my constituents are looking for answers. What is their reason for not being responsive? We're not responsive, you know, it, it's, what I, it's what my expectation is. My constituents reach out to me, reach out to animal control. I've had a lot of incidents that I have not been happy with the response and the just absolute lack of responsiveness. Um, I, I would like some answers. I want to understand the policies. I think they need more accountability. They need a chain of command. Let's have that discussion, and we'll schedule that in um, maybe an oversight committee, whatever else is appropriate. Okay, so motion to second. Okay. Council, second. 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 Council, Whereas the city council, the city. The All right, motion to waive the reading. Council Crow. Thank you, Madam President. This is just a follow up discussion. Uh, last summer, um, Councilor Liang and I 
did some, uh, you know, some research and took a deep dive into the uh, age-friendly planning model um, that's put out there by AARP. I know we had a pretty substantive discussion as a body here. Uh, it was just about a year ago, as well as a presentation from uh, Valerie Spain of AARP. Uh, I know that, um, you know, at the time, the resolution as presented was unanimously supported by the body. And uh, my understanding was that, um, you know, it was a concept that everyone was comfortable with and interested in moving forward on. And I think that uh, just to kind of take a step back that, you know, this planning model is just designed to, you know, do what we're already doing and make it, you know, even that much better. I think we have a solid uh, planning department and council on aging and many other hands that touch uh, the senior citizen uh, constituency on a daily basis. I found, you know, like I said, through this research uh, of this particular model that, um, you know, by entering into this plan, you're not only, um, you know, servicing the, the need for today, but you're really sort of building out a curriculum as, you know, the next 5, 10, 15 years sort of progress. And when you start to examine the amount uh, or the percentage of population uh, that are going to be, uh, you know, turning 65 years and, and older, um, you know, the numbers are absolutely staggering. So this, not a matter of if, it will become a, a larger and larger issue uh, for, for folks living in the city of Quincy, um, you know, the baby boomer generation that are looking to, uh, whether it's transition housing and stay in the city, downsize, um, or even just, you know, plug into uh, more of a, um, a network type community setting and or as we, uh, shape, continue to shape our ideals on developing the city, particularly the downtown, are we taking into account, you know, some of the um, amenities that would help, you know, the senior citizen population? It's no question that I represent a uh, very large senior citizen constituency. However, after, um, you know, spending some time reading through this and talking with folks from AARP, um, you know, it, it's zero cost to the taxpayer. It seems like it's just uh, it's more upside than anything. But what it, what I'd be curious about, and um, you know, perhaps uh, Mr. Walker would have more perspective on this. But I believe in order to take a step forward, uh, what needs to happen is uh, the you know the mayor of the city, Mayor Coke, would sign a proclamation. Is there any uh, any thought on that? Through you, Madam President. Yeah, the, yes, Council, the mayor um, will be supportive of it. I can look into exactly where it is in the process in terms of getting the application in over to AARP and, and what work has been done to date, but I don't think that that um, uh, should be too much. Right. Uh, I, know, I know there's a lot going on, yeah. in, uh, you know, but the other thing, too, you know, I had a very positive conversation with the mayor, and he was supportive of this, so I just didn't want it to die. I believed, you know, that there's, there's much more upside to it than not, so that's uh, hence the spirit of the resolution here this evening, so... Um, I do want to, uh, Madam Clark, if you could, I had a little case of uh, baby brain with the newborn. <laughs> when I put this in, right before the, uh, the agenda meeting was shaped up, uh, Councilor Yang should have been the co-sponsor on this resolution with me. So if you wouldn't mind just adding her on, that would be, uh, that would be great. But with that, Madam President, I would uh, you know, move adoption. All right, motion by Councilor Kroll, seconded by Councilor Yang. On the motion? Okay, just a second. Uh, Councilor Harris on the motion? No, no, second. Okay. I just want to second. Councilor Jane. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, Madam Clerk, if you would call the roll. Councilor Kane? Yes. Councilor Kroll? Yes. Councilor DeBorna? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor LaForest? Yes. Councilor Liang? Yes. Councilor Palmucci? Yes. President Hughes? Yes. Eight members. And number 17 on the agenda, 2017-148, resolve for shopping card ordinance. Yes. Uh, motion away the reading by Councilor Harris. Um, Councilor Harris. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, make a motion to refer this to the ordinance committee. Um, I have to tell you, um, I have to tell you, the, um, the city solicitor came in front of us. Um, we couldn't vote on a particular um, uh, a particular uh, brand new 
uh, CMOT. I'm going to come right out and say it. And I had a constituent send me five photos in five days of shopping carts when they told us that they were going to put the mechanism in to control the carts, just like the big Y. Um, yesterday, um, but it's not only CMOT, so I'm, I'm not just picking on them. Uh, the same goes with stop and shop. Yesterday, I went up, on, and, and Council Kane, I'm sorry if I'm mentioning your ward, I went up Fremont Street. Uh, there was two in the middle of the, there was two in the street. Th this is a problem that I keep getting, and especially with new development that's going to be taking place in North Quincy. Uh, there's possibly in that development going to be a, a, sh a shopping. We need to we need to up the ante on the fines, and I'd like that to go to ordinance. Um, so it's my hope that CMOT, Mr. Timmons will come into compliance with their original commitment to the city. But at the same time, I'd like to, as I said, strengthen our existing ordinance, covering shopping carts, create a further uh, deterrent to this. It really is a serious quality of life issues. And, Mr. Timmons, uh, so I submit this tonight with the hope that it can be referred to the ordinance committee. And uh, thank you very much, folks. Thank you, Councilor Harris. A motion to uh, move to ordinance. Uh, second on the motion. Seconded by Ann on the motion. I think it's a typo that it says it's a resolve on our agenda. Oh, yeah. It's an ordinance, it's an so ordinance. in order to be passed, it would go through the ordinance procedure. Sure. Correct. Oh, it is, because it, I, I, I think it must be, because it says it's a shopping okay. cart ordinance. So, so I would yeah. just okay. move that we, that we amend that in the, in the, in the minutes so that it's, there's no issue that should this ordinance get passed and it's not done appropriately. Uh, uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Palmucci. Um, and I know Councillor uh, yeah. Councilor, uh, Finn isn't here this evening, but for those uh, council veterans, I think this was a pet peeve of uh, Councillor Coughlin as well and something that he uh, also authored and attempted to fix during his tenure on the council and so um, I you know I, I just applaud Council Harris it's certainly something that junks up a neighborhood faster than anything particularly most of us who um, sort of are you know in neighborhoods with shopping centers or with um, vibrant downtown so um, but just a shout to the past to uh, Council Co not too far in the past I know Kevin is probably watching but um, but just a shout out to Councilor Coughlin too, who who tried the same um, as you. So um, with that, uh, that will go to ordinance. <clears throat> oh, we already did that. I thought. Oh, okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. It's great. The ayes have it. Uh, that will end our formal agenda for this evening. Um, at this point, I would ask uh, those of you to take a look at the uh, previous meeting minutes of June 19th and June 26th. Is there a motion to approve? Motion by Councilor Liang, seconded by Councilor Kane. All those in favor? Uh, yes, aye. aye, great, the ayes have it, thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, communications and reports from there or other city officers and city boards. Thank you, I do have um, a few correspondence. I have a letter from school committee member um, Emily Lebo that was sent out um, on June 23rd also to the mayor and the other school committee members um, in regards to the school committee budget and finance um, on the capital improvement plan and public buildings section. Okay. Um, I will be happy to place it on file um, with the council letter 2017-132. Um, it says, Dear City Council President Hughes and City Council members, I understand that the City Council did not have the opportunity to delve into the public Is there building section of the Capital Improvement Plan in 2017. Do you have to put it into the record? Oh, you have to read it into no, the record? No, you okay. all got a copy of it. We, we all did get a copy email. of it. I know that. I know, okay. uh, yeah, I know um, Mrs. Lebo emailed everyone a copy of the mm -hmm. letter. So, um, all right, that'll be placed on file. Thank you. Thank you. Also, um, Council Pamucci is asked to reference the email that you all received in July from Senator Keenan, sent regarding marijuana law, Chapter 55 in the Acts of 2017, an act to ensure safe access to marijuana. Again, something that you've all received and um, 
Council Palmucci, I don't know if you wanted to speak of, of it. It be referred to the Oversight Committee. Um, I, that may or may not have been in response. Um, I, I discussed with Councilor Keenan, uh, Senator Keenan, um, how the state law would affect the city host agreement and regulations that we have. I also have a, a letter um, that I believe, if it's not, it will be introduced as a communication to Solicitor Timmons, who at some point is going to come before the council and kind of give us an update as to um, what the state law, what impact the state law has on existing and proposed regulations in the city of Quincy. As you know, we have a uh, one of the few medical marijuana dispensaries in the state, um, one of the first ones to open, and we have a host, a, a very uh, robust mitigation agreement in our host agreement with them. So I want to make sure that that's not too damaged by uh, what the state did. So we'll refer that to Oversight Committee. We'll have a hearing at some point. Okay. Thank you. Thank Council you. Panaji. Third is um, a Crescent Street traffic petition. We, the residents of Crescent Street, have signed the attached petition because we are extremely concerned about the traffic on Crescent Street. Please review the petition and join with us in requesting a way of limiting the cut-through traffic that speeds down Crescent Street twice a day without any regard for safety of the residents. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Council Pamuche. If I may, um, I want to let the, the, the clerk finish reading it. Obviously not the names, but what the, the petition was. I'd ask that that come in um, as a petition before the council be referred to, um, I don't know, Public Safety, Public Safety Committee. Um, and that was sent and signed before we repaved the street. So I'm imagining they're going faster now. But yeah, that's like a car commercial. But um, uh, yeah, if we could refer that to um, to committee, Public Safety mm -hmm. Committee, and we'll, we'll address that um, in the normal course with the Traffic Department. Thank you very much, Council Kelly All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. I also have um, three grants of locations to refer to the Public Works Committee for Advertising. Verizon on Quincy Ave, re relocate one pole on the northerly side of Quincy Ave to a new pole on the northerly side of Quincy Ave. The new pole is necessary to allow a driveway for new development. Verizon in Mass Electric, Newberry Ave, place one pole on the northwesterly side of Newberry Ave 346 feet northwest of Squanum Street and Mass Electric National Grid Walnut Street to install a new pole to serve a new building on 133 Hancock Street. These will be referred to Public Works Committee for advertising and about his notices with um, the potential for public hearings. Okay. Do we have to vote on that? No. 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 We just need to um, again. Um, Some schedule. Schedule the schedule the public meetings. Yes. We will do that at the end of this. Thank you. And um, I also have traffic requests to refer to ordinance committee for advertising. Board one, Council of the Forest, to remove handicap parking at 65 Doan Street. Ward two, Council of Curl. Remove handicap parking at 48 Endicott Street. Ward 4, Council of Palmucci. Remove handicap parking at 146 Independence Ave. And Ward 5, Councilor Hughes. Add handicap parking to 92 Oak Colony Ave. Okay, so uh, we'll refer those to ordinance for advertising. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's all I have. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Um, and. Uh, I know uh, the city clerk is very busy at work getting ready for next Tuesday, so I just wanted to thank her and her team for those efforts. So thank you very much, Madam Clerk. We all thank you, too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, uh, unfinished business um, and the preceding meeting. Any? None. Okay. Reports of committees? None. Presentation of petitions, memorials, and remonstrance. Anyone? Okay. Well, tonight, tonight I was we were I was questioned by uh, on a live debate about um, uh, about in my ward uh, about Verizon. There's been a noticeable increase in the amount of utility lines that have been left unattached or dismantled 
in disarray at utility poles. Whereas these utility lines are ha haphazardly wrapped around the poles um, and left in excessive lengths along the sidewalks or streets. Whereas these lines are left unattended for several months and more. Whereas they are not only unsightly, but pose safety concerns to our residents. Therefore, be it resolved that the Public Works Committee hold a meeting with representatives of Verizon, National Grid, the Department of Public Works to identify these unattended utility line locations and create a protocol going forward that would address them in a timely manner. I want hearings on this issue, plain and simple. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much, Councillor Harris. So, uh, Councillor, uh, so you call for a resolve? It's just okay. Re I just re threw remonstrance. It out there. Yeah. Got it. Got okay, Councillor LaForest. Uh, okay. I just wanted to express our condolences um, on the passing of Steve Moynihan, who recently passed away. Um, great Quincy citizen whose family's been very committed. Um, North Quincy High School, class of 1948, inducted into the Football Hall of Fame. Um, he was a CPA in tax business. He was the director of business affairs for Quincy Public Schools and was, went above and beyond in his community involvement. He was the founder of the Quincy Retiree Association and the treasurer of the Quincy Retired Teacher Scholarship Fund, a longtime member and past president of Mass Association of School Business Officials, North Quincy Knights of Columbus, past president of Quincy Teen Mothers, and many other um, organizations. So uh, my thoughts and prayers are with Jean uh, and the extended Moynihan family on the passing of Steve. Great, thank you, Councillor Forrest. Um, in, in closing on uh, this particular section this evening, I uh, just wanna give um, folks the opportunity to know, once again, I know we all know here, but um, the mayor is uh, inviting our community to a fundraiser um, for the folks of Houston. And um, he uh, is pledging $50,000 from his annual charity golf tournament um, and is challenging us as a city to help match that donation. So um, this Thursday, September 7th from 6 to 8 um, at the um, Sacchetti Rob and Rob the Zeph Sacchetti and Rob are at 1472 Hancock Street. Um, there'll be uh, entertainment, food, um, and uh, we want to thank always, as always, uh, a big supporter of our community, of the council, and um, of uh, those in need, uh, Leo Kekka, for, um, for, for agreeing to do this with our mayor. And uh, thank the mayor for his um, leadership and his uh, incredible compassion. Um, you know, to uh, to extend our hand and the city's hand and, and his own hand uh, to those in Houston. So as somebody with family there, it means a great deal. So um, thank the mayor and ask all of you to attend or donate or do whatever you can in your own way or to this particular um, event. So, um, all right. Uh, with that, um, motions, orders, or resolutions? No. Uh, Okay, scheduling of committee meetings and public hearings. Councillor Kroll, I think. Hello, Madam President. So, <laughs> first the, of all, congratulations, Councillor Kroll, are in you. order for your new baby. Thank you. Just give us a little tell, 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 tell the world. Tell the world. The, the credit, the credit, believe me, goes goes all to my wife. How. Uh, <laughs> How she grew and delivered a 10 pound, three ounce baby <laughs> is beyond, uh, beyond me. But um, the Crow family's expanding, two boys. Um, everyone is well, everyone is well. So thank you. Awesome. Now to the numbers. <laughs> so, um, you know, and again, I wanna commend the finance committee for uh, your work in the last council session. We, uh, we were in this room so much so that I felt like it was almost as if my, it was my second home. So um, we had a lot of deliberation. We asked a lot of questions. We had a lot of late nights. And I know that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's time spent, um, you know, doing our job on behalf of the taxpayers. So 
Um, that being said, we have had the capital improvement plan pending as promised last council session. You know, my commitment um, to folks was to schedule some hearings. So um, what I'm targeting for in terms of a public hearing would be, um, and, and I'll work through this mechanically with Mr. Walker offline, but um, if you just want to flag it, next city council meeting, what is that? The, that's the 18th. So if we came in here at 6.30, obviously agenda dependent on what it looked like that night, but we could at least start at 6.30 with some public commentary. And then, um, you know, I'm just trying to stagger it because obviously folks got a lot going on outside of, you know, the general session here. But um, that week there's no planning board and zoning board, I'm told. So potentially, or if we could lock it in the 20th, which would be a Wednesday, we could be back in here and pick up the discussion on the capital improvement plan at 630. So you'd have the public hearing on the night of the city council meeting to maximize folks' time when they come here. And then, um, you know, a formalized finance committee meeting on the 20th, beginning at 630, to continue to work through the mechanics. So that's what I was thinking coming into the meeting. Okay. Thanks, Councilor. And I'll reach out to everyone uh, under separate cover with, uh, I'm going to work with Susan, as I had shared with you, to kind of uh, recycle some of the material that was presented to us. And again, use this time in between now and when we start debating it to, to you know, ask some questions and, you know, um, request information, how, whatever you need. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. Further scheduling of committee meetings or public hearings. Okay, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.